Welcome to Divine Femme TV. My name is Sarah Rose and it is an honor and a blessing to be able to to serve the courageous souls that are part of this collective awakening into heart-centered unity consciousness. So that being said, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I would love it if you leave a review and consider joining us over on YouTube at Divine Femme TV, where you can connect, leave comments, and I personally try to respond to as many of those as possible. The message coming through for the collective is one of surrender, and I know that this word may be very frustrating for many depending on where you're at on the journey because surrender is a common theme that you will revisit over and over and over and over again. I am aware that there are different ways of the collective that are tuning into these messages and some are fairly new to the journey. Some have recently met their twin flame and they have had all of their core woundings triggered and they are going through dark night of the soul, many tower moments and also opening up energetically and so there's a lot happening there's a lot of confusion there's a lot going on and your world may be appearing to fall apart and crumble i remember this phase of the journey over probably 10 or 12 years ago now where I referred to this as the perfect storm where everything seemed to not be working out and I was really being challenged and tested at a deep level and uh, it was coming from all angles it was coming from health related issues financial instability uh, shortage of income from the real estate crisis relationships falling apart Um, deaths in the family all of it compounding within a very short window of time and my faith was being challenged and tested so on this journey you cannot serve two masters meaning you cannot live from the fear based egoic mind and live from the heart simultaneously And this is something that becomes evident as you move through this process of transcending the egoic mind, the dualistic mind, aka separation consciousness, fear-based consciousness, and move into heart-centered unity consciousness, which is rooted in unconditional love. This journey you're on is the journey of transcending the dualistic mind and and living from your sacred heart, which is the portal to life and, and your connection to all that is. This is beyond even the physical heart or the heart chakra. Your sacred heart is your Christed heart where you are one with all of creation. And this is the transition that's happening as we move in as a collective waves move into this new earth energy living from and as the Christ itself the love that you are at the very earlier stages of this journey it can be very tumultuous and very confusing with a lot of fear and a lot of doubt And also a lot of divine guidance coming in, a lot of synchronicity. But at the earlier stages, especially, you are being guided to trust and have faith in something larger than you. And this gets refined as you move through this process, which I will elaborate on here in just a little bit. But I wanted to stay with with what it's like for those that are earlier on in the journey. Your faith is being tested. You're being asked 
to follow your heart and your intuition and to release control and to surrender. And sometimes that means that life has to bring us to our knees in certain circumstances because that's what it takes sometimes for us to fully surrender and release control. It doesn't have to be that way, but it often is, which is why suffering on this journey is so purposeful. Now, as you move through this journey, you will begin to become the master and you won't have to wait until you hit rock bottom or your back's against the wall before you surrender. And I'll elaborate on that phase of the journey, like I said, in a little bit. But when you actually are able to fully trust and surrender in those moments of faith, when you can find peace and truly surrender, which you cannot fake surrender, you cannot fake surrender with the universe, with God. There's no getting around this. It's a full surrender. It's an energetic surrender where you move into full faith and trust and knowing beyond the conceptual mind. Trust that things will work out. Trust that you are divinely guided. Trust that you are supported. Trust that if you follow your heart, that you are in alignment with divine will when you truly follow the whispers of your heart. The divine support comes in when you fully surrender and not until that moment. But when you do, the support always follows. But it will require you stepping through and facing your fears. It will require you taking either courageous sacred action or courageous sacred inaction. So it's not necessarily... A doing or anything like that but you may be guided to take a sacred action which is following an intuitive action that is heart-centered intuitively guided through fear or you may be guided to not take action which also will will mean that you face your fears by not taking action on something that you know is not intuitively guided so it can go both ways. And then for some it will be surrendering the outcome entirely to something larger than yourself and resting in faith and knowing that you are fully supported and that it's all going to work out without knowing how and without having any details around how it's going to work out. Because heart-centered living, intuitive living from the heart requires that you step into the unknown and that you surrender your attachments to the outcome and your expectations and eventually even your preferences of how you would like your life to unfold as you surrender more deeply to the divine will for your life. So I want to share like a little metaphor. So if you were like driving a car up until the point that you consciously stepped on this journey, which is the case for majority of the planet, the egoic mind is in the driver's seat. And your intuition, your heart, let's call it your inner being, your inner knowingness, your soul essence, your divine essence, whatever you want to refer to it as, is somewhere in the back seat, just watching your ego run amok and just continuously, you know, chase the proverbial carrot, seeking out pleasure and trying to avoid pain and just going back and forth, back and forth in this game of life, this dualistic nature, this dualistic nature, this dualistic reality. There's always a past and a future that you're getting sucked into. A narrative, a storyline. There's always 
something you're running from and something you're running towards. The egoic mind is always craving more and more and more and more and more. And it's very fear-based. And at a certain point, you step onto this journey consciously and your soul starts to sit in the passenger seat. So, you know, like that, you know, it's been a backseat driver whispering to you, but that backseat driver is always kind of annoying. You kind of always ignore them, right? And you're just driving. Then, you know, the, you, it, your soul and your divine essence moves into the passenger seat and has a little bit more influence over you. You're beginning to hear the whispers louder and you're being presented with life circumstances that are putting you in a choice point for your life. There's crossroads where you get to choose which way you're going to go. And you cannot serve two masters, so you're being forced to choose what feels like force because the life is presenting you with what you asked for as a soul, which is to awaken to the divine essence that you are. And so life is serving you up on a silver platter all of the life circumstances that you need to face your fears head on and give you the opportunity to choose consciously your heart, your intuition, what your soul knows to be true. And so you're being faced with a choice point, but it will feel as if your back's against the wall or feel as if you're stuck or, and things like that because you're continuously being pulled into the egoic mind, which is very fear-based, pulling you into stories and narratives um, of pain and suffering and ruminating in the past or projections into the future of how you want things to go. So what usually happens at this stage is you're being called and pulled by your soul in a certain direction, your most authentic timeline, what your heart knows to be true for you. And this can look different for everybody, different scenarios and circumstances. So this could be in the area of relationship or how you make money, career, where you live, um, all sorts of, you know, scenarios. So just apply it to your, to, to your circumstance, how it resonates the most. But so as you're being pulled... What's happening usually in this stage is the egoic mind is saying, okay, well, if I go that way, what's going to happen? Is it going to work out? How am I going to make money? Will I be able to support myself? Is this going to make any sense? Uh, Should I pursue this? Should I, is this really going to work out in my favor? What if I'm not good enough? What if it doesn't work out? What if it's a failure? Shouldn't I be thinking more logically like my parents are telling me or like my friends are telling me or like my partner is telling me or should I go down this road that is unpaved that has no certainty that is unknown that is wrapped in mystery but is also loaded with unlimited potential and an alignment with what my heart is trying to show me. So the mind is saying, I'll go, but you got to show me first. You got to show me first that this is going to work out. You got to show me I need a hundred percent certainty that this is happening or that this is my, this is the way and that this is what's, this is, It's all going to work out to my benefit and I'm going to be able to go live my happy, perfect life exactly the way I want and and all everything's going to be, all my needs are going to be met perfectly and I'm going to be abundant and it's going to just, everything's going to be beautiful and perfect and if you can show me heart, soul, infinite guidance, infinite intelligence, the divine wisdom of 
of the universe, if you could show me first, please, that this is all going to work out for my favor and that I can be 100% certain before I take this next step, then maybe I'll try it. (laughs) This is what the small little finite mind is saying to the divine intelligence of your heart that is infinite and wise beyond anything the mind can perceive. So you can kind of see how ridiculous this is that the mind is putting up all of these demands and kind of like a little stubborn child with with its arms folded and crossed saying, no, I'm not going. I'm not going unless you can show me everything and lay it out for me. Map it out all in advance. Let me see how it's going to play out. And if I see that it's 100% to a T, everything that I asked for and and everything I could ever dream of, and I know it 100% certain, then maybe I'll take my next step. And that's not how this works. The path to your most authentic timeline will unfold one step at a time as you walk it, and the divine support rolls in to support you when you surrender in faith to the process and you take that next step. And this level of surrender will deepen over time. So this is, I'll, I'll just, I'll shoot a, I'll record another message for those that are a little further along on this journey um, that have been on this journey for a while. So if that's you, then subscribe so you don't miss it, and I will be posting that next. For right now, for those that are really going through it, and again, this can still apply to you regardless of whatever stage of the journey you're on, but I do want to talk directly to the deeper level of surrender that's being asked of many right now in the collective in a separate message. For those that are going through it right now, Your soul has moved into the passenger seat, your divine essence, the the heart intelligence, the essence, the inner knowingness, whatever you want to refer to it, your God essence, and it's whispering to you and now you can hear it much more clearly and that's kind of causing some problems for you because now you're, you have this inner conflict, like this inner resistance, this inner division happening where you're at a choice point to choose what feels safe, what feels more secure, what makes more logical sense, what seems more rational, or maybe taking the advice of somebody else, whether that be your family, your your guidance counselor at college, your employer, your you know, your spouse or society in general, because there's a lot of societal pressure to conform to a certain life theme. And you are here to break norms. You're not here to subscribe to the societal norms. You're breaking free from the matrix. You're not here to conform to it. And this is kind of like the onset the initiation into fully living from the heart, which again will deepen over time, but it's going to require your courage. It's going to require that you step through the fear. It's going to require that you surrender in faith and trust in something larger than yourself to catch you. And and that's part of the process. And then the divine support rolls in as you take those steps and not until you take those steps. And then you begin to see that you are divinely guided and the miracle occurs on the 11th hour right before you thought like you you just you had no clue how you were even going to support yourself or get to the next level or you know it sometimes it comes down to dire straits especially at the beginning when you're really facing what seems to be a lot of tower moments because some, like I said, some people need to be brought to their knees and the suffering serves a much higher purpose. And the more you can glean the wisdom from what's happening and surrender, 
that's when you see the divine support show up and that's when you're able to move in the direction and inch your way towards what your heart is calling you towards. So back to the metaphor, as the soul is now sitting in the passenger seat, your divine essence, your inner being, which you are now hearing more clearly, which is putting you in in this choice point and at these crossroads in your life, you are the egoic mind that's still at the driver's seat primarily is getting a little scared. The ego gets scared when it starts to lose control and the egoic mind thrives on certainty. Okay? And so what's happening is your egoic mind is starting to grip that steering wheel. Grip that steering wheel. Like white knuckle it. Really holding on. Really clinging. Right? Really clinging to familiar situations or circumstances and really clinging by attaching to storylines and narratives that keep you cycling in fear because fear is what will keep the egoic mind sitting in the driver's seat is that resonating i hope that's making sense So as you begin to listen more and hear more with the ears of your heart, the egoic mind gets scared and starts to lash out. And the way it lashes out when it starts to white knuckle grip the steering wheel is it will hook you into fear-based narratives and storylines. So it will hook you by bringing up, you know, hook you into memories of the past where maybe things didn't work out in your favor or whatever narratives of the past things you want to avoid fear-based things that have happened in the past or it'll project into the future like maybe like what you should be focusing on focusing on what you should be doing or what's it going to look like and trying to have all this certainty of what it would look like if you actually did follow your heart and stuff like that. So it's pulling you into past and future. It's pulling you into this storyline that induces fear. And then fear is what keeps you stuck in the status quo and in your familiar comfort zone. And it keeps your grip on, it keeps the egoic mind in control, gripping the steering wheel. So this is bringing up a dream that I had probably about a decade ago when I was going through my own tower moment where shit was hitting the fan in all areas so just to give you a little context really quick um, my father had passed away who I had not yet forgiven for a lot of domestic violence and trauma that ensued growing up so that was taking a huge emotional toll I had ended an engagement so relationships were crumbling the real estate um, market I was a realtor at I had a real estate related business at the time and and getting into real estate and the real estate crashed real estate market crashed in the U.S. so um, I was uh, underemployed, like, like income was really rocky. I had lost a lot of real estate investments at that time. So that was taking a big financial toll, which was causing a lot of stress. And then on top of that, my health was, um, spiraling. I was sick and my immune system was shot from all the stress. So I, I landed in the in the ER with walking pneumonia because my body couldn't even fight off the common flu anymore. And on top of that, just going through, you know, all the fun parts of a Kundalini awakening and opening up energetically and having all of these synchronicities and um, energetic openings. And of course, the Kundalini awakening also causes a lot of disturbances in the body as it relates to the chakra system and the energy that's coming in so 
there was just, let's just say, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And the the car metaphor that I was using reminds me of, so it was it was beautiful that I thought to use this car metaphor because now I remember this dream that I had at this stage of the journey. And dream symbolism has always been a way that I've been divinely guided. And um, I had this dream where I was in the car and I want to make sure I remember this right because it was several, several years ago. I was in this car and I was driving and dream symbolism, a car represents the the, the path that your life is taking. It can represent um, the the ego and it can represent, um, yeah, just the path that your life is taking. And in this uh, dream, there was some fear. And I was driving this car, which really represented the egoic need to control the circumstances of my life. And so this dream was the perfect metaphor for this stage of my life. And it's the perfect metaphor for this message for those that are resonating So I was driving this car and, um, and all of a sudden it made a turn and I was going towards this cliff, this, it was driving right towards this cliff where it was going to drive off the cliff into this Canyon and something shifted within me where there was, you know, it was, I was very, the emotion of fear was present in the dream. And then all of a sudden it made a complete turn, which represented a turn in the way I was navigating my life. Right. So up until this point, it was very fear-based and ego driven. And the car did a complete like shift which represented obviously again like the shift in how I was navigating and a sense of like trust was was felt in the dream as it was approaching the cliff which obviously was representing this choice point where you really feel like you have no other option like things are happening right? You're about to drive off of this cliff. Things are happening. And the choice that was made was to trust. And as the cliff or as the car drove off the cliff, all I remember is my hand reached up, like one hand reached up and I was hanging by the edge of the cliff, like on the other side. So I went through the canyon, the car went down into the canyon and crashed. So it was like, it was a fiery crash, right? All I remember is that the car went down into the canyon and crashed and I was dangling then at the edge of a cliff on the other side by one hand. You know, there's so much symbolism in this dream, the car crashing, the ego death, right? The ego death, the car represents the egoic control navigating my life up until this point. The ego, the the car crashing into the canyon represented the ego death. The fiery crash represents the fire element, which is the transmuting, right? The transformation that happens, the like the phoenix rising from the ashes it's very the fire element is very transformative right and so that represented the egoic death the dark night of the soul and the shift that was being made the rebirth and i was i was saved i was spared by my faith by my trust just one hand, one hand hang, hanging. And I was dangling on the side of this cliff and then I woke up. So what I'm sharing with you is that the divine support comes in and it's going to be exactly what you need 
Is it going to be your end all be all dream come true when you take your first step in faith? It's going to be the next thing that you need on your path. It's going to be the miracle that needs to occur. It's going to be the divine support that comes in so you know that God has never left you and is with you and lives within you as you. And as you surrender to this divine support and this divine trust and faith through aligning with your heart, you will be shown always the support shows up in exactly the way it is needed for your journey, for your life circumstance to unfold perfectly the way your soul desires it to, the way the divine desires to experience itself through you. It will guide you to the perfect challenges and the perfect life circumstances and experiences because guess what that's what you signed up for this is this isn't a journey of just rainbows and butterflies and everything working out perfectly life has this intelligence that's always working that will present you with everything that you need at the right time and if you are at a crossroads right now and at a choice point where you are being guided to trust in faith and fully surrender then that is all that is being asked of you right now can you do that can you take the next sacred action that is intuitively guided by your heart and step through the fear or can you not take the fear-based action that you know is only going to lead you to um, something that feels very constricted or restrictive and your heart knows that and it's guiding you in another direction so it's going to require faith and trust in in this divine intelligence and the wisdom of your heart god dwells within you the divine essence life and the intelligence that runs life this infinite intelligence is you you are not separate from life you are not separate from the divine you are not separate from the from the earth and the flowers and the trees it's completely ludicrous and insane to think that you are separate from the god that created you and everything else you are one with it and you are being asked to trust it. You're being asked to surrender to it. And the divine support will show up. So, with that said, and I say this with absolute love because I've been there. I know what it's like. I, I know this journey of surrender quite well. I say this with love. That if your life is looking like a shit show right now and it feels like you're stuck in a million little tower moments and your back's, back is against the wall and you feel stuck between a rock and the hard place and your faith and your trust is being challenged and tested and you are being guided to follow your heart. That everything is working out for you and I am so 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 happy that you're where you're at right now even though it may feel like you're alone it may feel like you know scary and fearful I say this with love and compassion because I know what's on the other side when you trust in the divine guidance of your heart and the love of God that you are that is leading you. All that being said, I know that this is a tumultuous journey. I know this path of surrender quite well. Being a guide for others and a support system for others is part of my purpose. And I know I've had several spiritual mentors and guides fly in over the course of my journey to help at very pivotal moments on my path. And so there are some phases of the journey where you are meant to walk this path alone and there are some phases of the journey where the mentor flies in 
to support and guide you. And if you are feeling that this is the phase of the journey where you are looking for guidance and support, there are options available to you. Whether it's with myself or someone else, please seek out the guidance that you're looking for. It can really help catalyze your journey and gain clarity and get the support that you need. We ultimately are here to help each other rise. So you don't have to be going through this journey alone. And if you are feeling called for support, then I encourage you to reach out. Check the links wherever you happen to be listening to this. If you do resonate with, with my with my messages and my teachings, then I would be honored to support you on your journey. And until next time, I hope this finds you well. Namaste.